All right. All right. Impact's full 2005 Spike TV debut, episode one, October 1st, 2005. So we begin with a James Earl Jones voice guy talking about how these great athletes have been toiling in relative obscurity. And we see all kinds of flips and dives and dudes killing each other and whatever. And they, of course, plugged the champions here in this opening bit. The X Division champion, AJ Styles. Yes. Talking about how awesome he is. is Time to plug the tag team champions. I don't think maybe America's most wanted. Maybe beer money. Maybe uh, Team Canada. Maybe fortune. No, the naturals. Mm -hmm. I laughed. (laughs) That. The the blonde one and the brunette one. (laughs) The blonde one and the brunette one. Remember the match they had with Matt Farmer and uh, Crystal Soul? Every day I remember it. Yeah. So, uh, they were the tag team champions here. And, of course, Jeff Jarrett was the NWA World Heavyweight Champion. Of course. Here. And they show dozens of dudes doing all sorts of cool shit, talking about how great they are. So, we watched this on YouTube, and it's on Impact's official YouTube channel. Now, I'm not a subscriber. Maybe if you subscribe, you get around this. Yeah, that's a problem, bro, because I am a YouTube premium subscriber. I see. And uh, I flew through this show in 42 minutes. They threw in oh, it was great. a commercial literally every two or three minutes. Mm-hmm. So if you're going to watch this, just subscribe, because I would not do this more than once. Do you know how drunk I am right now? I all of a sudden was was talking, and I all of a sudden looked up, and you were there, and I was shocked. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is in the room? Who was in here? And it was Call you. Call the police. Golly. Holy. Holy smokes. That scared the shit out of me. So the show begins, and there's pyro going off, and Mike Tanay is screaming at me as he would for the next hour. About how it's going to be a 60-minute adrenaline rush. And there's a six-sided ring in the middle of this arena. And what m- stunned me most about this is that as I'm watching this screen on YouTube, there's the Impact show in the middle. And on either side of the screen, there's a thick gray bar with the Impact logo. Mm-hmm. I thought, oh my god, this is in standard def. <laughs> what kind of Neolithic caveman shit are we watching here? They mentioned the six sides of uh, the six sided ring. It's actually at least a dozen times. It's hysterical because in the first match, which we'll get to here, Mike Tanay, who it doesn't matter if he's calling doing commentary or a video shot or throwing it to commercial, Mike Tanay always sounds like he's reading from a script. Yes. You know what he sounds like? He sounds like he's uh, he sounds like he's he's Vince from the nineties. He's just promoting and promoting and yeah, promoting. A little bit. Everything he says, I mean it's not like I don't believe him, but he sounds like a wrestling promoter with everything he says. He's plugging the six-sided ring, and there's so many different things you can do in the ring with the six sides. And I watched the whole show, and I don't know what he's talking about, by the way, because it seemed like everything they see in a normal ring nowadays. Mm-hmm. But I guess there's two more sides. Right. Well, he says, you've noticed the six-sided ring. It's more than just eye-catching. It provides more options to our athletes. And like a minute or two passes... And he recites the exact same speech in the exact same tone. You've noticed our six-sided ring. It's more than just eye-catching. It provides more options. It's like when Brian calls you on the phone. You think you're on the show. Hey, Craig, how's it going? Hey, it's what's happening, everybody? Hey. I have not talked to Brian on the phone or any yeah, non-show capacity. I haven't called capacity. anyone on the phone in, in years. Probably since this show aired. I'm not sure I have cell service. I just can tweet <laughs> and text. <laughs> Okay. Actually, so, I know I have cell service because Granny woke me up this morning to tell me her computer wouldn't turn on. Yeah, you mentioned that. Yeah. So tonight on Impact on Spike, Jeff Hardy versus Rhino and controversy in Canada as Jeff Jarrett regains the NWA title. Fuck. Okay. Of course he does. Canadian controversy. What next? Yeah, in 2005. AJ Styles versus Roderick Strong is the opener. Jeremy Borash doing the ring announcing, Mike Tanay and Don West on commentary, and I actually I, I, I like Don West, but Mike Tanay is Mike Tanay for the whole hour, and I was done. By the he end. was he was so Mike Tanay that honestly, I mean I saw that uh, what's his face was there Don West, mm-hmm. but I didn't hear a word he said the rest of the show. Like I forgot he was there until you reminded me. I, it was like. He was there, but he he didn't add anything to the show. And Mike Tanay was just like the the steamrolling on through the show. Hmm, sounds familiar. I guess apparently Don West lives in Wenatchee. Yes, yes, uh, he's, he's, he's does something with one of the teams. One, one yes, of the, one one of the, the uh, hockey teams. The TNA did a tour right here. He fell in love with the area. Got a job with the it was I, I believe it's the Wenatchee Wild. And uh, as far as I know, he's still out there. I mean the uh, yes, he is. Okay, there you go then. 
So I looked it up. Cool. It's a nice place. All right. It is Wenatchee. Oh, he's outside Wenatchee. He's out in the river somewhere. He's got a little cabin. How do you know? Somewhere he shared photos of his house. Okay. It's a very nice, quiet spot. He's been all over the country and decided this mountain town with, with out in the riverside is a good place to live. Don't look at me. That's what he did. <laughs> I'm waiting for you to continue the review, bro. AJ Styles and Roderick Strong. Angry drunk. <laughs> I'm in a great mood. Let me tell you about this match. All right. Yeah. All right. I've told this story a million times when I'm drunk, and that's what drunk people do is they repeat stories. Right. So when I went down for the King of the Indies, AJ Styles was in the tournament. And uh, AJ Styles uh, showed up at like noon and he went over his match till five. They were in there forever, just going over every single solitary spot. And then, of course, it was uh, it was hilarious because about 15 years later, AJ went to New Japan and he did matches with the Young Bucks. And he <laughs> lamented that these fucking kids want me to remember all this shit. I can't remember anything. Because at that point, he was not memorizing every single one of his matches from start to finish. The X Division matches on this show, I don't believe one move was called in the oh, ring. Oh, hell no. Are you kidding? It was like they showed up at noon, and they practiced their match in the ring every single solitary spot so yes. that they could do a sprint of moves. Oh, God, yes. And, like, it was fun. But there was nothing resembling a story. I sound like an old man right now. No, which, you're right, though. Which I well, am. I mean, there was nothing resembling a story. No. It was just a million moves, which were fun moves. I mean, the, the match was really fun. But it was like when it was over, I didn't get shit out of it. I can't even remember who fucking won. I think AJ did, obviously. But, like, it was just a bunch of shit that happened. They had three minutes. So they said, let's do eight minutes worth of stuff. And we're going 1,000 miles an hour. It all looked great, but... It's like, there's a reason wrestling is not washed on fast forward. Yes. This so was a, this was a sprint, and there was no music between the notes. It was just, no. as I've said before, it was speed metal. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what this was. This is a speed metal wrestling match. They still managed to have Chris Daniels come out and distract AJ leading up to their Iron Man match. But uh, AJ cuts Roderick off, hits the Pele kick, and he styles Clash and won. It was a. Like I say, eight-minute match in three minutes, and for about two and a half of those minutes, AJ was on offense because it was an AJ showcase, and it was very effective as an AJ showcase. Oh, and it's a mess tonight. It's oh, big, good, good, good. Big, big mess. Uh-huh. I've got so much junk here, I don't know what I'm doing. Brian versus Reigns. That was WrestleMania 6, 1990. No, it wasn't. <laughs> no, it was not at all. Warrior versus Hogan. No, how fitting. Both very tan. <laughs> Start out. I've been laughing at myself on the show. I don't know if I'm laughing at myself or with myself. Who cares? Or... You're laughing. Yes. Well, it's What kinda... difference does it make? Well, it makes me feel kind of stupid. Oh. <laughs> what? Like Mondo. I'm doing something dumb. Granny, do you personally agree that Brian is on the genius level of intelligence? Of course I am. I don't think so. <laughs> Why? Not how... What evidence, not how I what evidence do you have, Granny, that I'm not a genius? Oh, I've got Besides lots. the first uh, 10 minutes of this show. We used to do the twist and the polka and the hip hop. And uh, there was one. Excuse other me, one the I hip hop? <laughs> yeah, hip hop. Really? That's what Granny did. did hip hop. Huh. Yeah. You learn something new every day. No, I don't. Sounds like you're a grandmaster instead I of a grandmother. My phone's ringing. Can't, you don't say. <laughs> Who's calling? I'll just let it ring. All right, we'll wait. Yeah. Probably my brother. It doesn't say on the screen who's calling. I haven't looked. <laughs> if you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.